If you want to know the secret of how to pass an interview before you've even had it, well, then continue watching. From having years of interview experience and seeing over 100 other successes or failures from myself, I can tell you exactly what the process is, so please listen. Now, bear in mind that this is all on data science and programming. If your interview was more for swimming, I really can't help you very much, just to let you know. So knowing that, let's get into it. Now, assuming you've passed that initial screening, this is where the interview process really starts. You're not going to stand out from the initial call very much. And even then, often this person doesn't have that much of a say in where you go from here. Now, at this point, you are either nervous or you are not nervous. For those of you that are not nervous, you are in a million times better shape than the others because under pressure, people perform significantly worse and you stop being yourself. You start worrying about other things and not listening to what they're saying and you're just all over the place and it's not going to work. For those of you that are comfortable, you are in a million times better place. So how do you get to the spot where you're already comfortable? Now, I can honestly tell you it's at this intermediate stage that's going to really impact what you have going forward. So it comes down to basically two things. One is your ability to recall the things on your resume, and the other is your mindset. As a potential employer, of course, I would absolutely love you to know everything possible. If you did, I would probably hire you right now at mlnow.ai. Take a look in the description if you haven't already. But basically, like, come on, you're not going to know everything. So what would you know? Well, I would expect that if you had some projects on there where you did actual code to solve actual problems that, that can't be done just by simple automation, then that is where I would be interested because I don't want you to have all these facts memorized. I don't care. Like ChatGPT is very, very good at just getting stuff done. You need to be a problem solver, a person that can take Lego blocks, put them together to build a castle. Genuinely, how would I, as a potential employer, try to find out if you were the person that could do that? Suppose you had a great project where you had a bunch of machine learning done on a cloud. You deployed it on, say, a Flask API so that people could do a simple upload, do some machine learning on the inference side, and then return the result back to the person. Well, I would ask you each of those individual pieces. Say, how did you make the model? What sort of decisions did you make when making the model? How did you make the architecture, both physical, is it GCP, AWS? AWS, how did you configure that? All the little pieces that actually went into that. People think it's about the facts and it can be, again, facts are great. The more facts that you can learn are very helpful. But the main thing that most employers are looking for in the discussion part of the interviews is, did you solve the problems that you claim that you did? A massive reason why this is so successful and really practicing to make sure that you can regurgitate this information is because if you've memorized a story on it very, very well, then you can actually make each interview feel very, very similar across different companies. Let's be honest, are you seriously going to get the first interview that you get asked for? Maybe. Some, sometimes people do. But you should definitely be prepared not to. So what you want to do is have some sort of a repeatable formula so that you can keep getting better at better at something. And it's not just like, oh, this is one random shot. This is a random shot. If you keep it regurgitating the same story, knowing the same information and getting better, better at telling it to people, then you're going to get more likely as you keep going. Once you get good at this, you can really force the interviews to actually be discussed about the things that you want to discuss. And that I found is the biggest way to success is actually engineering the interview yourself. Of course, if there's a leak code question, you can't take away the leak code question. You still have to do that. But for the parts where you're talking to people, which is a lot of it, well, you can actually engineer the conversation in a way that's going to get you to talk about the things that they want to hear and the things that you know best, which is great. So that's the educational piece, but it greatly, greatly overlaps and just basically simplifies the mental piece, which is how confident are you that you're actually a good candidate? Once you have that story, once you feel like you can explain it over and over again in a great repeatable way, well, then you're going to have the confidence of where the interview is going to go. Because most of the time, people are extremely nervous about these interviews, which is what impacts your performance the most, because they don't know what the interview is going to be about. What are they going to ask me? What do they care about? Of course, they, they still might ask you things. But you can greatly engineer the interview in your favor if you already know beforehand what your best skills are, what you're best at talking about. That's going to give you the confidence before the interview even starts. You know what you're going to say. You know that you're going to be able to say it well because hopefully you've practiced it many times before. And that's going to greatly, greatly help. Trust me. With all of this said, being blunt, it is still very common in the workplace to ask traditional data structures and algorithms questions. I'm not a big fan. A lot of people are not a big fan. 
But it is common sense that if you think they are going to ask that and you know you are not very good at it, then you obviously need to greatly practice that. And you're just banging your head against a wall if you refuse to do that and you just hope that one day you'll get by without it. You might, you might find someone that doesn't, but it's going to be a lot easier if you just solve your own problems and just learn it yourself. A bonus piece that is honestly a ticket to a job before you've even had the interview is if you get a take-home assignment, do it well. People like to get mad at their take-home assignments like, oh, they asked me that, there's all this work. Oh my god, it is a golden freaking ticket to getting a job because all of the other people have that mindset of, I'm going to do an average job and I'll get the average result. You don't want the average result. If you do the average result, you will land in the middle of the clients on average and that is not near the top. Companies don't take most of the people, they take one or two tops. So how do you get to the top? Do that take-home assignment really, really well. Even if for some reason they don't take you after that, you've still learned a ton. You know what interviewers are going to be looking for and you, you're you way better in the future. So just do it well. I hope that was helpful, guys. Genuinely, that is how to pass the interview before it even starts. Have a great day, subscribe, and I'll see you later.